What's going on guys? Today we're going to be watching this sprint training with Yombo Visma Academy video from Tua de Tietma. A lot of you probably haven't seen this channel because it's in Dutch. The titles are in English, but the actual videos are in Dutch. But it's a very popular channel. They've got 122,000 subscribers. They're probably most famous for their wheelie contest video from the Tour de France. That kind of went viral, which was really cool. The editing's amazing. I really like the videos they do. But this video is quite interesting because what they're doing is, from what I can tell, they're following this rider, um, Jossie, who's a club rider, young guy, and they're doing different training with him to get him ready for a race. And in this video, they're with the Yombo Visma development team the juniors, the under 23s, and they're doing some sprint training with him. And it's quite interesting because the coach is there giving feedback to this guy sprinting on how to improve his sprint. Just before I get started, these Yumbo Visma Academy guys, I can't underestimate how good they are. They are extremely talented. So just an example, Tua Alsace, that was on this year, started with a five minute prologue and the Yumbo Visma development team went first and fourth. And you can see the time gaps are quite small, but this was like a stacked field. Let's go through some of the teams here. So they, were, they, they won the prologue, got fourth. Seg Racing Academy was there. DSM development team. Like even the depth in the team to win it and go fourth is, is crazy. Uh, let's have a look through. We've got Alperson Phoenix development team, Sam Gaze, extremely strong mountain bike, absolute weapon. Guillaume Van Kiel's book, really experienced rider, used to be World too. I think he's dropped now back down, uh, but absolute weapon. If we keep going down, we've got some Aussies in here, so Team Bridge Lane, their top three riders, so Jensen Plower now riding for Group Armour FDJ development team next year. Matt Dinham, Sam Eddy, track rider, like that's a strong team, and they got 20th. Um, the other Bridge Lane team was even further down, but you can kind of see like, that's, they're three really strong guys and they got 20th and these, these basically Yumbo Visma kids went first and fourth. Insanely talented. Well, the genetics thing quite interests me a lot because like some of these kids would be like fourth, fifth generation cycling families, just peak of talent. It's just crazy. Um, anyway, that's kind of irrelevant. Let's get into the sprint video, see what we can learn watching a more novice rider learn to sprint against some of these absolute weapon kids. We have a Fransie for you, Jose. You have now a mate training with the young boys, the academy guests of the young Fisma. So you can hear it's in Dutch, so I'll mute it. So this is, um, they're at the academy here. This is our boy, Jos, Jossi, uh, Jos. That is the guy who is going to be doing the sprinting. So you can see they're young guys, they're just kids. I mean, they're probably between the ages of what? 18 and 21, most of them. Um, They don't look, <laughs> they really don't look like, they don't look like much, honestly. They look like just regular kids, but they're, they're absolute weapons. So we'll see um, him having a go in the sprint. Bit of a warm up here, spinning around. So they're at like a, this must be, Yumbo Visma must have like a dedicated criterium track, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can see the editing here, like super slick, different camera footages, all these different camera angles cut up really nicely. Couple of warm-up sprints. So this is the first sprint here. I've got it down in quarter speed. Let's play it through. So you can see here difference in technique. Nice bike movement from all these kids. Really good. And you can see here just a bit awkward looking, like not the the bike is not in sync with what the body and the legs are doing. Um, and he gets towed up. <laughs> like honestly, he gets he gets totally dropped, which is fine. He's he's just uh, they said he's like a sport class. B, which is like their sort of B grade, um, sort of club level rider. And I think he actually said this was one of the first sprints he's done. I think he's actually, he looks like a fit kid, but doesn't have much racing experience. So, go, so going back here, let's look at the technique. Look at the bike movements of these three. Bike swinging a lot more, body staying more stable. Whereas here, he's not, his bike's actually not really moving much side to side. And he's kind of, it's like awkwardly sort of in between his legs just disjointed. So that was the first sprint. They have a coach here who's actually gonna give him feedback. So let's skip ahead, see what the coach has to say. He's already tired. <laughs> He's already tired. This is just the warming up. <laughs> uh, you've already given everything, we'll start. <laughs> These guys are like nose breathing, like I was <laughs> barely out of second gear. Okay, so they're gonna start um, with a start speed between 25 and 30 kilometers per hour. 
choosing the right gear. So starting gear is is important. So making sure that if you're going for if you're going for maximum acceleration, peak power at the start of your sprint, you don't want to be in too hard of a gear. People naturally feel like, oh, if it's a bigger gear and I'm pushing harder on the pedals, I'm going to get out more power. That's not true. Power is a combination of cadence and torque on the pedals. So you need to have if you want that peak acceleration, that short burst of power, a slightly lighter gear than probably feels normal, that allow you to get the cadence up and get the power up at the start. So you can see here he's actually asking, um, what is the right thing? I find that difficult. Should it feel heavier or lighter at the start? The coach says, well, <laughs> where you can go, what's fastest for you? 80 to 100 RPM. Start, then you'll have to switch gears. Does that feel a little too light maybe even or a bit too heavy? So yeah, I would say start in a slightly lighter gear. If you're just looking for that max acceleration, yes, you'll have to shift more pretty early in the sprint, but it's gonna allow him to keep up. If he starts in too big a gear, these, <laughs> these Jumbo Visma kids will be, they'll be freaking 10 meters up the road before he's done two pedal strokes and he's out of the game. So I'd say start in a slightly lighter gear, at least get that acceleration, then he can change gear as he goes along. The coach also said starting between sort of 80 and 100 RPM. It's kind of pointless because I don't think he's gonna be, he's not gonna be able to look He's not going to be able to look at the head unit to see what the cadence is as it starts. So it's more of a feeling, slightly lighter gear. Just feel like you can get on top of the gear in that first punch. It's going to allow better acceleration. Let's see here. Lars is one of our fast men. Was Lars in Tour of Alsace? Let's see. Here we go. Lars Boven. Bang. There he is. So he actually was, was won this prologue. One of the absolute three weapons that won that. There we go. Interesting. And he's on a bit of a sprint as well, which is cool to see. So... This is the next sprint. Let's watch it all the way through. You can cut, you can see the awkward, oh, I wish they held the camera, but you can see he's getting fully dropped. Um, I think Joss can choose a slightly lighter gear. Coach is saying he's over geared. Yeah. So let's go back there, watch that through. So here we go. You can see nice bike movement left, right, left, right for Lars here. Then Jossie here. It's just, it's just awkward, isn't it? I mean, the bike's not really going where it feels like it naturally should. The coach gives some instruction on how to improve this, which we'll get into. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see, you can definitely see that this rider has just done more sprints in his life. It really comes down to it. There's definitely it's like technique and some coaching to do, but it comes down to experience. If if Jossie here went, goes out and does um, sprints every day for the next few months he would get it looking like that naturally. That coordination will come. And yeah, he's just starting in too high a gear. So five pedal strokes in, Lars is 10 meters up the road and the Joss is still there trying to get the gear, um, trying to get on top of the gear. If you're enjoying the video so far, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. And if you want more of these training related videos, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to dig around the Tour de Tiet, my YouTube channel see what sort of content they got and do more reaction videos to see what we can learn about training. So this is where the coach starts giving some instruction to him. A little lighter gear when you sprint. Lighter, yeah. Yes. And above all, use your upper body. Keep it really stable. So you can see here, some of the, he's giving some cues to the athlete to stay more stable. So don't wiggle from side to side like a sponge. Really get that power to your legs, okay? So, so, so high level cues. Anything else is he going to say? <laughs> yeah, he's cooked. Um, we can build up very well. So nothing too specific there. It will be fine. Cool. Interesting. So you can see there, I really like the approach of this coach. So you can see there, basically two cues. Keep your body stable and stop wiggling like a sponge. And this is something I found when I'm coaching riders on sprints. They will come to me and they'll be like, oh, I was watching this video where this coach said, like, when you're in this phase of the pedal strike through the sprint, you should be using more of your hamstrings. And I'm like, that is that sucks. It's terrible advice, really. For such a complicated movement like sprinting on the bike where you've got the movement of the bike, you've got the coordination of your arms, of your trunk, of your legs, each leg separately. You've got to look up the road, stay safe. There are so many moving parts to a sprint of the road that I, I, would, I really think this coach has done a good job in giving just high-level cues very general things where you're not getting the athlete to overthink things. Because as soon as you start going into, you need to be doing this in this part of the pedal stroke or this specific movement with the bike, we could definitely see in that sprint that it was awkward. The movement of the bike side to side was awkward for that rider. And a coach's natural instinct might to be to try and over explain that. 
and tell the coach, well, and tell the athlete that, oh, when the bike's moving to the left, your right foot should be doing this and you should be doing this with your upper arm. But as soon as you go into those sorts of details, the athlete overthinks it and then the coordination's going to go out the window. So I, I, I big thumbs up to this coach. He obviously knows what he's doing. He's a Yumbo Visma coach, but visualization I also find helps a lot. So Joss here, is it Jossie or Joss? I could be saying this wrong. Jossie here should be using visualization. So visualizing what a well-coordinated sprint looks like and might feel like. And, oh, and then just naturally practicing that over time, I bet you he would find that through the process of visualization, the sprint will naturally become more coordinated and that movement of the bike won't look so awkward. So I really like the approach of that coach here, not trying to over explain things. So actually let's go back and have a look here. So we got, here we go. I still think he's a bit over geared. He's keeping, yeah, so keeping up a bit better, but you can see the cadence of the two riders comparison, comparatively there. I will, I will go back. So here, let's play it through in regular speed again. Three, two, one, bang. And you can see the cadence there. He's gone. Like <laughs> four pedal strokes in, he's, Lars has taken off. And the cadence here, he's just muscling it way too much. Um, as a newer rider, he's probably not going to have the coordination in that higher cadence as he gets up to... 100, 110, 120 RPM. As a newer rider, as a club rider, he's probably gonna to struggle to get that coordination. So he might be preferring the lower cadence just from a coordination point of view. But you know, if he's gonna have any chance of keeping up with, the, with Lars, he's gonna to need to up the cadence off the gun there. So just to wrap up here, so what are you taking away from the day of training with the academy? And he says here a couple of different things. Um, I really need to be able to do 10 or 15% more at the top end. I don't think he'd struggle to get that. I think if I was coaching him, I'd be able to get him that 10% on his sprint. It's gonna come mostly from his cadence, if he can get that up, but that's gonna require more coordination and more technique. He'll get that through sprint repetition. Um, probably also power-wise, he could probably get a couple of extra percent with some specific sprint training, but most of that 10 or 15% improvement that he wants, he could get through coordination and cadence increases. So I think that's possible. Um, the coach says here, otherwise I'm always just like yesterday and now I'm not dropped off far. Yeah, so he's, he can hold the wheel, he can hold the shoe, he can hold the shoe, <laughs> hold the shoe there. Um, yeah, probably train hard, don't drink, <laughs> live well. Why does every coach say that? <laughs> because it's true. So he's got five weeks to go to the race. So five weeks to put 10% on your sprint. So if he, let's say at the moment in those sprints, let's say if he's doing 1100 watts, as a rough guess, could he be doing 1200 watts in five weeks? I think, yeah, I think that's possible. I did that sprint video where I put about 100 watts on my sprint in, in a month. So it's possible. It just takes specific training for it, but it depends. I mean, what's his, I don't know if he's just gonna be training his sprint or if he's gonna be doing more endurance building or if he's doing trying to work on his climbing like it depends what he wants to target but 10% on your sprint in a month for a beginner like him is possible so yeah he's got a tour of hack coming up um in five weeks hank tour of, <laughs> tour of hank so yeah that's it for this video great video there from tour to tietma really liked it thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one